George Reeves, was an American actor, best known for his role as Superman in the television program Adventures of Superman. Reeves was born January 5, 1914, as George Kiefer Brewer in Woolstock, Iowa, the son of Donald Carl Brewer and Helen Lesher. Reeves was born five months into their marriage and the couple separated soon after Reeves' birth. Reeves's mother who was of German descent, moved to California to stay with her sister. There she had met and married Frank Joseph Besselow by 1920, while Reeves's father married Helen Schultz in 1925. Reeves reportedly never saw his father again. In 1927, Frank Besselow adopted George as his own son, and the boy took on his stepfather's last name, becoming George Besselow. The Besselow marriage lasted 15 years ending in divorce, with the couple separating while Reeves was away visiting relatives. When he returned, his mother told him his stepfather had committed suicide. According to biographer Jim Beaver, Reeves did not know for several years that Besselow was still alive. Besselow actually died March 4, 1944 at age 51, when his adopted son was well into his movie career. Reeves began acting and singing in high school, and continued performing on stage as a student at Pasadena Junior College. While studying acting at the Pasadena Playhouse, Reeves met his future wife Eleanor Needles. They married on September 22, 1940, in San Gabriel, California, at the Church of Our Savior. They had no children and divorced ten years later. Reeves's film career began in 1939 when he was cast as Stuart Tarleton, one of Scarlett O'Hara's suitors in Gone with the Wind. He was incorrectly listed in the film's credits as Brent Tarleton. It was a minor role, but he and Fred Crane were in the film's opening scene. He starred in a number of two real short subjects and appeared in several B-pictures, including two with future President of the United States Ronald Reagan, and three with James Cagney. These roles did little to advance Reeves's career, and his contract with Warners was dissolved by mutual consent. Released from his Warner contract, he signed a contract at 20th Century Fox, but was released after only a handful of films. Paramount Pictures recognized Reeves' talent, and signed Reeves up for two films a year. However, Reeves decided to put his budding acting career on hold and enlist in the U.S. Army. He was drafted in early 1943. He was assigned to the U.S. Army Air Forces and performed in the Broadway show Wing Victory. The long Broadway run was followed by a national tour and a movie version. Reeves was then transferred to the Army Air Force's first motion picture unit, where he made training films. Discharged at the war's end, Reeves returned to Hollywood. Many studios were slowing down their production schedules, and some production units had shut down completely. He appeared in a pair of outdoor thrillers with Ralph Bird. As more and more time passed between acting jobs paying less and less, Reeves was reduced to appearing in a low-budget serial produced by Sam Katzman, The Adventures of Sir Galahad, and taking a second job digging cesspools. In June 1951, Reeves was offered the role of Superman in a new television series titled Adventures of Superman. He was initially reluctant to take the role, because like many actors of his time, he considered television unimportant and believed few would see his work. The half-hour films were shot on tight schedules. At least two shows were made every six days. Reeves's career as Superman had begun with Superman and the Mole Men, a film intended both as a B-picture, and as the pilot for the TV series. Immediately after completing it, Reeves and the crew began production of the first season's episodes, all shot over 13 weeks in the summer of 1951. The series went on the air the following year, and Reeves was amazed at becoming a national celebrity. In 1952, the struggling ABC network purchased the show for national broadcast, which gave him greater visibility. The Superman cast members had restrictive contracts preventing them from taking other work that might interfere with the series. Reeves, however, earned additional income from personal appearances. He had affection for his young fans, and took his role model status seriously. He avoided smoking cigarettes where children could see him, and eventually quit smoking. Reeves had a romantic relationship, with a married ex-showgirl eight years his senior Tony Mannix, wife of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer general manager Eddie Mannix. In the documentary Look Up in the Sky, The Amazing Story of Superman, Jack Larson said that when he first met Reeves, he told him that he enjoyed his performance in So Proudly We Hail. 
According to Larson, Reeves said that if Mark Sandrich had not died, he would not be there in this monkey suit. According to Larson, Reeves also said he would feel better about his role as Superman if he knew he had any adult fans but never learned that Adventures of Superman had adult fans, even during its original broadcast run. After two seasons, Reeves was dissatisfied with his salary in the show's one-dimensional role. He was 40 years old and wanted to quit and move on with his career. The producers looked elsewhere for a new star. Reeves established his own production company and conceived a TV adventure series called Port of Entry, which would be shot on location in Hawaii and Mexico. Reeves wrote the pilot script himself. However, Superman producers offered him a salary increase, and he returned to the series. He was reportedly making $5,000, about $48,000 in today's dollars per week, but only while the show was in production about eight weeks each year. As for Port of Entry, Reeves was never able to gain financing for the project, and the show was never made. His good friend Bill Walsh, a producer at Disney Studios, gave Reeves a prominent role in Westwood Ho the Wagons in 1956, in which Reeves wore a beard and moustache. It was to be his final feature film appearance. He appeared as Superman on I Love Lucy, episode number 165, in 1957. Character actor Ben Weldon had acted with Reeves in the Warner Bros. days, and frequently guest starred on Superman. He said, after the I Love Lucy show, Superman was no longer a challenge to him. I know he enjoyed the role, but he used to say, here I am, wasting my life. Reeves and Tony Mannix split in 1958, and Reeves announced his engagement to society playgirl Leonora Lemon. Reeves was apparently scheduled to marry Lemon on June 19 and then spend their honeymoon in Tijuana. He complained to friends, columnists, and his mother, of his financial problems. The planned revival of Superman was apparently a small lifeline. Reeves had options for making a living, but those options apparently all involved playing Superman again, a role that he was not eager to reprise at age 45. Jack Larson and Noel Neal, both remembered Reeves as a noble southern gentleman, even though he was from Iowa, with a sign on his dressing room door that said, Honest George, the people's friend. Reeves had been made a Kentucky colonel, during a publicity trip in the South, and the sign on his dressing room door was replaced with a new one by the prop department, that read, Honest George, also known as Colonel Reeves. A photo of a smiling Reeves and the sign appears in Gary Grossman's book about the show. On June 16, 1959, Reeves was found dead from a gunshot wound to the head, in the upstairs bedroom of his home, at 1579 Benedict Canyon Drive in Benedict Canyon, between 1.30 and 2 a.m., according to the Los Angeles Police Department report. In the windowless upstairs bedroom, Reeves lay naked on the bed in a pool of blood, a gun between his feet, a shell casing beneath his corpse, a bullet in his brain, and a thick spray of his gore stretching up the wall to the slanted ceiling. In contemporary news articles, Leonora Lemon attributed Reeves' alleged suicide to depression caused by his failed career, and inability to find more work. The report made by the Los Angeles police states, Reeves was depressed because he couldn't get the sort of parts he wanted. Newspapers and wire service reports quoted LAPD Sergeant V.A. Peterson, as saying, Miss Lemon blurted, he's probably going to go shoot himself. A noise was heard upstairs, she continued, he's opening a drawer to get the gun, then a shot was heard. Then she said, see, there I told you so. The official story given by Lemon to the police placed her in the living room with party guests at the time of the shooting, but hearsay statements from Fred Crane, Reeves' friend and colleague from Gone with the Wind, put Lemon either inside or in direct proximity to Reeves' bedroom. According to Crane, who was not present, Bill Bliss had told Millicent Trent after the shot rang out, while Bliss was having a drink that, Leonora Lemon came downstairs and said, tell them I was down here, tell them I was down here. A number of questionable physical findings were reported by investigators and others, no fingerprints were recovered from the gun. No gunpowder residue was found on Reeves' hands. Some sources contend that it may not have been looked for, as gunshot residue testing was not routinely performed in 1959. The bullet that killed Reeves was recovered from the bedroom ceiling, and the spent shell casing was found under his body. Two additional bullets were discovered embedded in the bedroom floor. All three bullets had been fired from the weapon found at Reeves' feet, 
though all witnesses agreed they heard only one gunshot, and there was no sign of forced entry or other physical evidence that a second person was in the room. Despite the unanswered questions, Reeves' death was officially ruled a suicide, based on witness statements, physical evidence at the scene, and the autopsy report. Reeves' mother thought the ruling premature and peremptory, and retained attorney Jerry Giesler to petition for a reinvestigation of the case as a possible homicide. The findings of a second autopsy, conducted at Giesler's request were the same as the first, except for a series of bruises of unknown origin about the head and body. A month later, having uncovered no evidence contradicting the official finding, Giesler announced that he was satisfied that the gunshot wound had been self-inflicted, and withdrew. Reeves is interred at Mountain View Cemetery and Mausoleum in Altadena, California. In 1960, Reeves was awarded a star on Hollywood's Walk of Fame on Hollywood Boulevard for his contributions to the TV industry. In 1985, he was posthumously named one of the honorees by DC Comics, in the company's 50th anniversary publication, 50 Who Made DC Great. Actors Alan Ladd and Gig Young, were reportedly skeptical of the official determination. Reeves' friend Rory Calhoun told a reporter, no one in Hollywood believed the suicide story. In their book Hollywood Kryptonite, Sam Kashner and Nancy Schoenberger make a case for the involvement of Tony Mannix, the wife of MGM vice president and fixer Eddie Mannix, with whom Reeves had been having an affair. Others suggested that Eddie Mannix, rumored to have mafia ties, ordered Reeves killed. Thanks for watching. For more videos please click like and subscribe.